Well, hello and uh, welcome everybody. Uh, this presentation is going to be called Creating Health and Wellness Through Nutrition and Lifestyle. Again, I'm Tim Duffy and we have a special guest, Felicia McIntosh Will, who is a certified functional nutrition coach and an integrative health practitioner. And we're going to be uh, learning a lot from her. So what are we going to be learning in this hour and a half that we have together? Well, I'm going to start off with part one, telling my story of how I overcame all these different health ailments that I was suffering from. I'm going to share with you what I discovered from different books on health, what you can do to increase your lifespan by 14 plus years and learn some of the habits of the longest lived people in the world, which is what I've been adopting into my life because I want to live to 150. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, part two, Felicia is going to be talking about what it means to be a certified uh, nutritional, functional nutrition coach, yeah, I'll fix that, and, and an integrative health practitioner and how you can transform your health and adopt five easy tips for eating healthy on a regular basis. And what she's going to share with you is some increasing slides of sickness where we're basically seeing positive trends, but not positive in a good way, positive in a bad way. And what some of those causes are as we're still discovering and more and more information is coming out and just learn to uh, her story of how she had to overcome her health ailments, not only for her, but her family. So uh, let's jump right in. So before I start again, I'm going to just share my personal stories about my own health and wellness. I know that every single person has a different body, different uh, ways uh, of being. They have different food intolerances. So again, I'm just sharing my perspective and my story, but everybody is different. And I, so I just wanted to put that disclaimer. Listen, I'm not a licensed or certified nutritionist, I'm not a doctor or physician. I'm not offering specific health advice, but if in this journey of you hearing my story that it inspires you to say, you know what, maybe there are solutions to my health problems or people in my family or my friends. And let me provide some resources so that you can begin your journey in discovery. And then in part two, Felicia will share all about her credentials and what she's doing to help transform people's lives. And at the end of the session, if you really love what Felicia is sharing, you can book a free 15 minute uh, consultation so that she can support you. So I'll start off with my story. This cute, chubby little baby is me. All right. I was born in a, a hospital in Oceanside, California, uh, a little gordito baby. And uh, you know what? Even though I was born healthy as I grew up, I discovered I had a lot of different health ailments that I didn't know uh, that I was going to have. The biggest one, especially when you grow up in California, which is known to have a lot of smog and different air pollution, I had asthma. And so if you're not familiar with what asthma, heard of it, what asthma is like, it's when your lungs fill with mucus and you can't even breathe. Just imagine you running up, up a street and then instead of breathing in and out, you had to breathe through a straw. That's the equivalent of what my childhood experience was like. And thank God with modern medicine, I had an albuterol inhaler. And every time I had uh, wheezing or I had difficulty breathing, I would spray this uh, steroid inhaler and it would relax and calm the, the lining of my uh, my lungs and you know uh, it would allow me to breathe much better and so it was kind of spooky because if i didn't carry around that that inhaler i could die and i was still active and involved in different sports but you know that was always on the top of my mind you know always your inhaler and so what ended up happening is uh i had other health ailments so that, that short guy in the left, that's me, okay? Because by the time I got into junior high, I was surrounded by all these kids that were growing up, you know, very, very tall. And I was just super short. And which was kind of shocking because my brother, he was actually very tall. And my other brother was reasonable tall. My brother was like 6'2". My other brother was like 5'11". 
And I said, what's wrong with me? Why can't I grow? And then I also had skin problems. I had a very big problem of acne as, as any kid goes through puberty uh, would know. And then also I had a little bit of scoliosis so that when I would see doctors on my medical checkups, they would say, hey, you know, Tim, your spine is leaning a little towards the side. I'm like, you know, we don't have to put in metal rods in your back right now, but it's something to keep an eye on. I'm like, Oh my goodness, I got a terrible lot in life coming up with all these health ailments. But as you all know, in elective society, uh, I, I view every single event as a learning and growth opportunity. And if it wasn't for all these health ailments, I wouldn't have discovered my own health journey and be able to help other people. So another big thing is that I was a vegetarian. My, my parents raised me as vegetarian. And some people would say, well, Tim, isn't being a vegetarian a very healthy lifestyle? It can be, and it also can't be. Depends on what you're eating. So this was my uh, diet. Enjoy eating cereal in the morning, Rice Krispies, Doritos. For dinner, having pasta. When you go eat out, you can't buy a hamburger, so you eat french fries, or you get a grilled cheese sandwich or pizza. So carb, 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 fat, fat, fat. And again, I have a lot of my people, a lot of people in my family who are vegetarian, but are uh, overweight. And just so I actually am not always advocating, hey, everybody needs to adopt a vegetarian diet because body types are different. But, you know, just because you're vegetarian doesn't mean you're healthy. Any type of diet that's ill planned can be a terrible diet. So that was a big discovery for me because I wasn't healthy. And then uh, as I you know, would visit my grandparents and my father in New York, because my parents were separated, at one point, those of you who are in elective society know my life story, I ended up staying in New York and said bye to my mother, I'm going to live here. And that's when my life transformed. And so one of the biggest way that it transformed is I had a radically new diet. So even though I was a vegetarian in California, I still was a vegetarian in New York. But this time, breakfast started off with eggs, whole grain toast. Um, you know, I would have for lunch, big salads. Uh, I would have mixed nuts and bananas and different fruits and apples, eating oatmeal. Uh, you know, dinner would be brown rice with either some beans or some kind of uh, you know, nutritious type of meal. And guess what started to happen? I grew six inches within less than a year. And it was shocking. Why? Because I actually was finally getting the nutrition that my body needed in order to grow. One of those things is protein. I wasn't eating protein. You can't just get protein from eating carbohydrates all day, you know, cheese and pizza. And so, boom, shut up. And I had already gone through puberty, so I know, but it was the diet that transformed me. And without to getting so graphic, my body was so polluted with so much years of neglect of like eating garbage and junk food that for those whole two years while I was living here with my grandparents after I moved, I was constantly blowing my nose. I was constantly spitting into tissues. Mucus was just coming up, coming up. And after the second year, it all stopped. But guess what actually happened? I stopped having asthma. So it was an incredible transformation that shows you the power of diet that can actually affect your health. It doesn't mean I was cured of all my health problems, but as you can see, I wanted to start researching and learning a lot more about what it means to be a vegetarian, about eating healthy diets. So again, this is me transformed, you know, almost six feet tall at my wedding, as some of you may have seen this picture. So let's talk about my journey about researching and reading about health. So I was the only vegetarian when a lot of other people weren't a vegetarian around me, especially going into elementary school. They're like, vegetarian, what's that? Now it's very, very common to be a vegetarian, a vegan, a lacto-ovo vegetarian, a pesca vegetarian, like all these different things. But I was curious, like, why do people come become vegetarians? I mean, my, my parents just raised me this way from the time I was born. So the biggest reason, uh, there's three reasons why people become vegetarians uh, based on like research and studies. The most common is religion. So my parents were something called Rosicrucian Fellowship at the time. And they believed in reincarnation. It was a form of Christianity. Uh, and what ended up happening is they believed that, you know, uh, 
animals are sacred, et cetera, et cetera. Then my, my parents, they changed religion often, as some of you who know my life story. But uh, then my parents became Seventh-day Adventists. And I found out that the Seventh-day Adventists are also vegetarian. They go to church on Saturday. And Hindus also are vegetarian. So I'm, oh, this is interesting. I didn't know all about this. The second biggest reason is animal rights. And again, the way that, that America and industrial agriculture has been treating animals is very heartbreaking. And so in, in I, I could have even showed more graphic images than the ones provided here. But as you can see, they were putting chickens in all these different cramped cages and things like that. And they were pecking at each other, even horrible things where they just cut off the beak so that they wouldn't peck at each other uh, so that they could live longer in order to be, um, you know, eaten. So uh, again, didn't mean to spoil your dinner if anybody's planning on eating tonight, but there's something beautiful about, you know, the souls of animals and, and that many people, even farmers, and there's great stories where, you know, their whole life, they, they basically had two separate minds. One is, this is my job. I have to just slaughter animals just to make a living. But then sometimes there's a switch that turns on when they see the animals and they connect into the soul and they look into the eyes. And then, and, you know, some people, uh, many just transformed and stopped eating meat. So again, I've heard a lot of those interesting stories that are very powerful. And then the last reason, uh, again, there could be multiple reasons, but these are the common, is health. So they started researching the longest lived people in the world, and I'm going to be talking about that in a short time. And they found out that a lot of those people don't eat a lot of meat. Uh, remember, we were talking about Seventh-day Adventist. Well, guess where one of their headquarters is? Loma Linda, California, right there on the map. So again, they have a diet that's predominantly vegetarian in Costa Rica, Italy, Greece, and uh, Japan. And so they all, uh, the other countries and areas that do eat meat, it's very sparingly. It's like four times a month. Uh, so imagine that's like one and a half times a week. So they have predominantly whole food plant-based diets. So that just continues the journey of discovering about health. So uh, I started reading all these different books. And again, you can get sucked into buying all this book and this book and this book about health, this new fad diet, and et cetera. And because I know that many of you are college students or postgraduates, and you're like, I don't have money to be buying all these different books. If I could recommend one book that you could buy, this would be my personal opinion. It would be a, a prescription for nutritional healing. And the reason why I say that this is my favorite book, because when you buy it, it's like this thick. I actually have it on my shelf right over here. It's like this thick. And what it is, is that the first section is teaching you all about nutrition. What are fats? What are, uh, you know, what are the different vitamins and things like that? So it's a kind of a, a great crash course. And then the rest of the book is an encyclopedia of health ailments, right? You start off with A, with acne, you know, all the way to Z. And any type of health issue that you may be dealing with it actually provides you a summary of what that health problem is. Then it starts sorting uh, what are the typical things that you could take uh, or do to help alleviate that problem. What are the supplements that you could take from the most important uh, and effective to the least effective, uh, some herbal medicines. So it's like, wow, it's a great resource. So I find myself connecting because again, if I wasn't doing what I'm doing now, I'd probably be a doctor. I talk with people and they talk about their health, which is a very, you know, a common thing for people to talk about. I'm fascinated. Oh, you have uh, Crohn's disease? Let me look up in this book. What's the cause of Crohn's disease and things like that. So again, it's fun, interesting, and just it's a very great resource to start you on your journey. I'm not saying that it has all the answers, but at least it gives you some insight because again, right now you could Google search but there, there's all these different things. And how do you know stuff is more credible than the other? At least you have somebody who's actually taken the time to curate all this information in one place. Uh, the next book uh, or person that I learned a lot of my health information from was Gary Null. Now, Gary Null is a very controversial uh, health guru. Uh, he's been around since like the 70s, 80s, and 90s. He's very uh, out there, and, and he talks about a lot of political things, and he's very controversial. But listen, 
I have a high degree of openness. So even if I don't agree with a person on everything, or even if I don't like them as a person, because I've heard stories about Gary Null, but anyway, uh, I'm just so grateful to the knowledge that he has provided to the public. He was on the, he has his own radio show uh, uh, and, and it's still ongoing. And he's given out so much health information just for free to the public. And he was the only person that when I was, uh, you know, growing up and listening to that, he was able to get AIDS patients and cancer patients into complete remission. Why? How did he do that? It's not surprising. He basically took them out of their environment, provided a stress-free environment, gave them vegetable juices, had them exercise, and completely radically changed their diet, their mentality, their psychology, and, and did all these different treatments and therapies and was able to recover. So it was quite impressive stuff. The, the next book was Pain-Free by Peter Egoscu. And so this book was all about why do we have pain? Why do you have back pain? Why do you have leg pain? And all this other kind of stuff. Now, there could be a multitude of reasons but this book was saying that one of the biggest reasons why we have pain or we pull a muscle or whatever it might be is because we are living a life that's sitting down, watching TV, on the computer, and that our muscles were meant to be used and move around. And when we don't use those muscles, they atrophy. And when you find yourself doing some kind of movement that you're not used to doing, pulling a certain way, you end up pulling your back or pulling this other muscle because the muscles are not strengthened. So the whole book was all about him treating athletes, you know, um, basketball players, that can't even lie back and do foot circles with their foot. Uh, you know, these are professional athletes because they use different muscles and they don't have the flexibility. So this book was all about increase your flexibility. He borrowed a lot of these different concepts from yoga about stretching. And so it was funny because he, at the end of the book, he gives you a 15 minute workout regimen. That's not about like lifting weights. It's about stretching. And you do a lot of, you know, golf grip, arm circles, forwards, backwards, say, stand up against the wall, squeeze your elbows together. And I would go to the gym and I would do these exercises and people would look at me like, what the hell is this guy doing? But again, I was trying to implement these new health healing modalities qualities and it was very helpful. And it was great for my spine. It was great for my posture. My dad, who's um, um, a doctor or retired now, he, I gave him the book. He loved it so much that he started to incorporate it with his patients. And it was just amazing. And there's another uh, very popular book is How Not to Die, right? Uh, not Morbid Tileable at all. And what it was basically teaching people about how in the medical establishment, they do not, if you want to become a doctor, the amount of information that they train doctors on eating and healthy eating habits is so small. Some, some don't even have a course on it. You know, it might just be one little lecture. And so this doctor saw people transform his own family, uh, transform cancer and remission all through diet that he, as a medical doctor, says, I need to discover what it is is about eating and eating healthy that can reverse you know, disease, uh, increase longevity. And, and lo and behold, the secret answer is vegetables <laughs> and eating healthy. And he basically talks about, uh, again, we'll talk a little bit more about this, but um, about your biological clock, there's little things called telomeres uh, on, your, on your chromosomes, like very, very microscopic, and the length of them will determine what your biological age is. And, and so there's certain things that increase your lifespan or increase your telomeres and the things that decrease your telomeres. And I would never forget it because he says, is broccoli and cauliflower increase your telomeres. And so I'm like, the food that people don't want to eat is the healthiest food that you, you could eat. So, uh, and then again, other things that can, uh, you know, ruin your health. So a okay, very fascinating book. Again, uh, you know, great, great knowledge, great information. So I'll continue on. So I wanted to still discover I had uh, health problems. One of them was acne. I've already grown, uh, my back's fine, but I still have a lot of acne on my face. So what did I do? I tried proactive and you know put all these creams, benzoyl peroxide on my face. It ended up bleaching all my collared shirts. And it was just so sad. And, and I would put toners on, alcohol pads. And I remember reading the proactive and seeing the commercials like, this will clear your acne, maybe for some. But they said, guess what? Diet 
doesn't have an effect on your skin. And I'm like, all right, I guess if they say, oh, a well-balanced diet is always recommended, but it doesn't affect acne. Okay, so go to the dermatologist. All right, what do the dermatologist say? Here's some retinoid creams. Uh, let's give you some oral antibiotics. And then they said, you know what's really good for you, Tim? Why don't we give you Accutane? And it's been very, very helpful for people. I'm like, uh, let me see what are the side effects of Accutane. And again, if some of you have taken it and, and God bless you, cleared up your acne, good for you. But I read it and it said, um, this may cause your skin to dry severely. You might always, you might have dry eyes for the rest of your life where you might need eye drops. Your skin uh, of your lips will become uh, completely chapped or could be that you may require to use lip balm for the rest of your life. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is so scary. It's going to dry up all my pores and I'm never going to sweat or, or, or have sweat glands again. So I'm like, no, thank you. I'm going to continue with my journey. So again, I read the Balch book uh, all about eternal medicine and they say you can try different diets. I went vegan. I went gluten-free. If you are vegan and gluten-free, I'm telling you, that is tough job. Like I'm like, what can I eat? Everything out it, you want to eat out. It's very, very difficult. And then they say, here's supplements you can take, fiber. So I would get like psyllium husk, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And I would take these pills and drink the water and I would start to get feel all bloated. I'm like, this is terrible. You know, I even went to doctors in New York City and did drip, IV drip therapy. So they, in, they, they put vitamin C drip into my bloodstream and hydrogen peroxide. And I feel my, my body all tingly all trying to test out these new different healing modalities. I did colonics, right? Where they put a tube up your butt, hot water, cold water, back and forth, and then they suck it all out. Very gross. I won't get too graphic, but you know, uh, they do actually have a, a on the tube that, that vacuums everything out. Uh, it's glass. So you can actually see what comes out. And again, uh, I had the person telling me, oh, I see something there. I see a parasite there. I see, I'm like, what are you sucking out? Oh, there's a, there's a, a rock there. And like, meaning like stuff gets hardened and gets in those little crevices. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy stuff. And then I would see a chiropractor uh, who was trying to help me. Then there was other chiropractor who practiced an, uh, it's called the NAET method, an allergy elimination technique where it's the, you do acupuncture, you basically grab a certain food that you might be allergic to, you hold it in your hand, you do all these acupuncture on your body, and then you have to avoid that food for 25 hours. And then they, you come back the next week and then they grab that same food in a little vial, that substance again, and then they test your points using kinesiology to see, muscle testing to see if you're still allergic to it. I know it sounds woo woo, all right, but I can tell you that uh, this one quick story I did it and I thought that you could you had to avoid that food for 24 hours not 25 hours and I ended up doing it cuz I thought that's what I thought it was and they did the muscle test again of this food substance and I remember my chiropractor saying what the heck is going on you still have an allergy to this food substance and I'm like I did what you said I did it you know 24 hours like it's 25 hours and I'm like oh my goodness and so it, again there are some crazy stuff out there. And if you want to try it, try it. You know, it's all part of your journey. But then the last treatment that I had for my acne, which is what the most important one, there was a, a, a natural doctor in New York City called Dr. Baez. And this guy, you know, it, it took months for you to actually um, get an appointment with him. And so uh, I finally had some kind of opening I went to go see him and what he did was something called a dry blood morphology test. And I had never heard of this before. So what he did is he pricked my finger and so it started bleeding. And then he put it on a little glass, you know, little uh, microscope plate and then put another glass on top of it. And my first thought, I'm like, how come he didn't clean my hand with alcohol? But anyway, <laughs> I'm just a very sanitary person. He puts it under the microscope and starts examining my blood. And he's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he's like, you see that? That's a parasite. I'm like, parasite, I'm hearing that word again. What's in my, what's in my body? I'm from the colonics to this. And he's like, you see your red blood cells? They're misshapen. They're supposed to be perfectly round. They're irregularly shaped. Do you know what the cause of that is? 
And then he's like, and I'm like, what? And he's like, your liver is over being overworked. He's like, how often are you having a bowel movement? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe once every other day or something like that. He's like, no bueno. You should be going once to twice every day. And I'm like, going to the bathroom once, twice every day. That sounds like crazy. And I'm like, listen, I'm already eating humongous salads every night. And so I, I, I don't understand why I should be going to the bathroom if I'm not going to the bathroom enough. And so he's, here's what he said. He says, it's not just about fiber. What you have to do is you have to drink a lot of water. So I'm like, okay, fine. So I was working in government at the time and they had a little water cooler. And I usually, I would sip like maybe about eight cups of water throughout the day, but I'm like, I got to listen to what, you know, Dr. Bias says. So when I would get the water, I would just down the whole thing, just drink it all up. And then I would get more water. And then I would sip on that. Like I would drink normally. And guess what started to happen? My skin started to clear up. And what was so interesting is at that time, I was still seeing my chiropractor who was also an enzyme specialist. And I told her about what Dr. Baez said, because again, it's always good to like have multiple opinions and, and especially when more than one person says that there's the same problem. And she's like, yes, when I was doing my enzyme therapy and I was touching different parts of your body, I noticed that your liver was a little bit hard, meaning like it was inflamed. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And, and so here's the reason why I bring this up. Not only is, first of all, the easiest thing to do is drink water, but look at what all these different techniques were saying. The fiber supplement, the colonics, the enzyme specialist saying it was my liver. So just because some doctor says this could be the problem and you try some uh, healing modality and doesn't work, doesn't mean that they're completely wrong. And it just really showed me, it's like, okay, that could be a cause, but are you, are you doing it the right way or to get that result? So that's why it's all about testing and trying different things in order to get your result. So now I'm going to switch topics a little bit because now I'm a little fascinated about longevity and increasing your life. So there's a famous doctor that I've, I've shared with you all before, if you've ever attended one of my um, training sessions on longevity with uh, Tony Robbins, which I'm going to talk about shortly. Uh, he's this Harvard researcher, and he's been studying how to increase your lifespan. And so it's very easy. It's very simple. Are you getting enough sleep? Uh, your body needs to regenerate. And so this whole idea of pulling all nighters, it's not going to work because, you know, you need that sleep in order to operate in your body to operate functionally. Don't overeat. How many times do you, I almost got used to the feeling that I needed to eat so that I could feel full, right? And it's like, no, you know, eat, uh, eat and eat slowly and don't overeat. So if you're satisfied, stop there. You don't have to have uh, become addicted to that feeling of full exercise and avoid and reduce stress. And again, to say that, hey, reduce your stress, whatever it may be, that's really tough. But guess what? You may not be able to eliminate completely stress because we can't all zen out on an island for uh, forever. But if we do uh, know that we need to de-stress, then we do things that will help us de-stress. Like for example, me, I meditate every morning. I do my journaling. All these things help me reduce my stress that help me live a longer life. And then he talked about this uh, clock, uh, the Horvath clock, the epigenetic clock, or the biological clock. And he said, and they started to discover through all this testing, what increases your lifespan when you have NAD? And where what, what increases NAD? Uh, the diabetes drug metformin uh, that helps keep uh, blood sugar levels down low. But if you don't need to take that supplement, there's things that you can do naturally. What can you do naturally to increase your NAD levels? Fasting. So that means wake up in the morning instead of uh, you know having breakfast, skipping a meal and having your main meal uh, at lunchtime. And doesn't mean that you'd have to eat less. You could eat uh, the normal amount of stuff on, uh, on lunchtime, snack, dinner, whatever it may be, but it's that giving your body that, that fasting, that time 
restricted fasting helps to increase these longevity genes that, that, that increases your biological clock. And then high intensity interval training, meaning doing the exercise, lifting the weights, something that causes a lot of stress that repair that really helps. And then the last thing is if you wanted to take another supplement, resveratrol has been shown to be very healthy. And if you don't want to take the supplement, uh, resveratrol is also found in red wine. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that a little bit. So uh, in terms of the continuation of the conversation of longevity in the blue zones, so these are, are the main areas of the longest lived people. Now they started to discover what are not just the eating habits, which I shared with all of you, what are the behavioral habits? And so there was nine of them. And so here's what those nine habits were. Number one is that they were constantly moving walking, climbing up hills, walking in a park, anything that you could do, that's the exercises that helps increase longevity. Having a life's purpose, meaning that when you wake up in the morning, it's not just about being retired, it's about do you have something to do, something to look forward to? Your de-stress routine, like such as yoga, um, prayer, meditation, um, again, small meals, not, not eating to overeat, uh, just feeling that 80% full, a, a predominantly a whole food plant-based diet, you know, uh, it, and uh, again, the Adventists were vegetarians, but all the other different regions, they had like more of a Mediterranean diet where it means they had, you know, um, some meat, but it was very sparingly <laughs> having drinking red wine with their friends. Now, listen, I don't drink red wine, but I can understand that whole idea of being around friends, socializing, laughing, all that other stuff is actually very healthy for you. Having a tribe, a committed group of friends that are looking out for your best interests, that you're together, you know, and, and connected, which I thought was very valuable and interesting. The next thing was family first. So what does this mean? It means the people who live the longest, they didn't throw grandma or grandpa into a nursing home and say, bye. They basically said, hey, Grandparents, loved ones, stay with the family, help raise our, you know, our children and be, be connected with them. If a person actually has a partner, husband, wife, or a life partner, that increases your life. You know, having that sense of community and family has shown to actually increase your life. And I've heard, also heard funny statistics about men who single men don't live a long time. <laughs> Why? Because probably their wives say, don't do that <laughs> because, you know, that's dangerous. Uh, men, men have shorter lifespans if they're single and um, probably trying to do riskier things. Again, I know that's just one little anecdote, a little story, but I thought that was cute and funny. Um, again, and then the next thing or the last thing is having some kind of faith-based community. And this means it doesn't matter what religion, what denomination or whatever, it's just somebody, a group of people who come together to, you know, to connect with that higher power as part of a, a ritual kind of thing and, and connected to that higher source, whatever you want to call it, call it your, 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 the universe, call it God, call it love. It's just people coming together and, ha and, and having that faith and bringing, believing in a, uh, something greater than themselves. Again, that can increase your life by four to 14 years. Like they got that specific with these, these measurements, which I think is just mind blowing. So uh, again, I did a recording on this book uh, by Tony Robbins called Life Force, and it's all the latest breakthroughs in technology to increase longevity. I talk about, um, you know, uh, Sinclair, uh, the Harvard researcher, but I'm going to send with this recording a link to that video so that you can learn all about the new testing to help increase your longevity. So if you want to know what my health routine is right now, when I wake up in the morning, I start off with some kind of spiritual reading. I want to connect to that higher power. Uh, those of you who know me and been in elective society know that I'm a big fan of uh, Godfrey Ray King's uh, works. The first book is Unveiled Mysteries. It started me on my deep spiritual journey to connect with God, connect with my higher self that was very transformational. And there's many series of books. I do my gratitude journal. Uh, what am I grateful for? What do I want to accomplish in the day? And my affirmations. I do uh, meditation afterwards. And some people say I don't have time to meditate, but all of you who are in elective society know that it's the habit of the most successful people in the world. So whatever your excuse, I don't have time, start off with one minute. Okay. And once you do a one minute of meditation, 
move up to three minutes of meditation, you know, and you just start off with the morning. And then if you get better and better, then start doing it at night before you go to bed. My goal is to do it half an hour in the morning, afternoon, and at night. I'm not there yet. Right now, I'm, I'm about five minutes in the morning, maybe 30 minutes if I end up falling asleep and taking a nap, uh, and then about five minutes before I go to bed. So again, it's constantly improving, but if you put it as an impossible thing, like I'll never have time, then you're never going to do it and never benefit from it. I do work out four times a week, lifting weights with my buddy who's a personal trainer. I'm a big I'm a big advocate of having a personal trainer. Why? Hold yourself accountable. And number two, they teach you proper form. I can't tell you how many times I had my buddy correct my posture, says, hey, listen, you're not doing it the right way. You have to be doing it this way. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I have to lower the weights because it's too heavy. It's like, Yes, because form is more important than that amount of weight, because uh, that's how people injure themselves. And so I, I'm a big advocate for that. I am a lacto vegetarian, so I do eat cheese, but I tremendously reduce the amount of cheese, which I'm going to tell you in a little bit of how I connected with Felicia about that. But now when I do eat cheese, I only eat raw cheese, meaning it's not cooked. It has the enzymes and everything like that. And guess what? When I eat a lot of dairy, I get very mucusy. When I eat the raw cheese, I get no mucus. It's just mind blowing. I do eat eggs. Occasionally, I will use an app to help track if I want to lose weight. Like right now, I'm trying to lose a couple pounds. Uh, the days that I'm not working out, I'll fast. I'll skip breakfast, right? And then just eat at 12. I do keep moving. I walk with my dogs, with my with, with my wife at night when she comes home from work. I do some gardening and I avoid alcohol. I avoid strong caffeines. Why? Some people depend on coffee, can't survive with coffee. I get it. I understand. But from all the different spiritual books that I've read, research, when I consume a lot of coffee uh, or any kind of stimulant with a lot of caffeine, what ends up happening is I get jittery. My mind starts racing. Now, again, it can maybe increase your focus, but guess what? I'm taking out of being calm and present. My anxiety starts picking up. So again, I make worse decisions when I'm stimulated all with hepped up on caffeine. So I drink green tea. I drink small amounts of yerba mate, which is a little bit stronger, almost like black tea caffeine equivalent, but I have to do it in small dosages because I don't want to have all that strong caffeine. So uh, again, that's me uh, about just some of my, my things. And yeah, I don't drink alcohol. And so some people might say, Tim, you're no fun. You don't drink any alcohol. Well, I say, try losing your inhibitions without drinking alcohol, learn how to be friendly and outgoing and not nervous. So, uh, you know, all my friends saying, Tim, you're so outgoing. We I wonder what it would like to be, see you drunk. I said, well, if I drink alcohol, it's going to put me to sleep. You know, I'm better off, you know, being very outgoing like that. And so if I were to summarize how to eat healthy, have clean water, clean air and clean food, <laughs> right? It, it's that simple. So at my home, I have reverse osmosis water because water is filled with contaminants and all these other kinds of things. New York City water is a little bit better than most other water, but still it has chlorine, all this other stuff. But because reverse osmosis is one of the best things to clean out water, it takes out some of the minerals. So I use these trace mineral drops and add a couple of drops to my water and it, and, it, and it makes it more flavorful, but it's also good because your body needs those minerals. Whenever I have um, air filters all around my house, uh, the, the cheapest and best filter uh, air filter rated by Consumer Reports is called the Winix air purifier. You can go on Amazon. It's like 150 bucks and it, it's a four filtration, cleans out the air, pollen, kills viruses, amazing. And when I travel on planes, because that's where the air tends to be very stagnant and a lot of people are, you know, blowing their nose and coughing and stuff like that, I have a personal air purifier. And so I wear it around my neck. You see that one black right there? That's mine. That's old school. Now they have ones that are nice and white that look much prettier that you can get. Type in W-E-I- E-I-N, Wayne Ionic Air Purifier. And what it does, it sends negatively charged particles that kills viruses and repels uh, pollen, dust, and everything like that. And it, and it has this uh, 
beautiful smell to it. It can be very strong and, and it, it gives off a little bit of ozone. And if anybody who knows science, ozone, ozone, that's bad. You know, that, 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 they, that's like smog. It's, it's a minute amount. Also, ozone kills viruses and bacteria. So if you're very sensitive to it because it's a skin ir, um, irritant in your lungs, if it's, if, if it's too powerful, you just move the, the air filter a, a little bit more away from your, your mouth and your lungs. So uh, it's been shown to you know reduce all those stuff and kill viruses. So, and then the last thing is eating healthy foods. Uh, organic, like I have my garden. Listen, if you can't afford organic, I think I saw some of the chats, uh, you know, about eating uh, frozen veggies, you know, uh, again, Felicia, I think that was great recommendation buying bulk. Listen, I can't, there was a time in my budget was so limited, I couldn't buy organic. So I went to Costco, I bought for $5, you know, six uh, things of romaine lettuce, you know, uh, again, I prefer organic, but it's all I could afford. Or I bought the frozen veggies and made veggie soup because I couldn't afford to buy all this organic produce. And so things that you could do. So I think that was really great. You know, I appreciate that uh, suggestion, Felicia. And then other things that I do for my health, if um, colloidal spray. So a colloidal silver is a spray before there was the invention of antibiotics, they had silver and it's known to be an antibiotic, an antiviral. So milk jugs that would be delivered to your door, they would put on a, a coin in there and it would extend the length of that um, uh, milk and which was very uh, surprising. So you could spray it in your mouth, uh, different things. There's also something from Gary Null produced called bug out. And I've read all the ingredients and I've researched them it's antiviral, antifungal. It has like cayenne pe pepper, oregano oil. When you take it, it's so potent and strong. It's almost like burns. But listen, uh, you know, if I've ever felt a tickle in my throat, I, I had, <laughs> this is only anecdotal. I had friends that actually had COVID and, and, and were struggling. I gave them a couple of drops of this and they said that they felt better the next day. So again, uh, just amazing thing. I don't recommend doing it all the time because I don't want you to kill all the friendly bacteria in your gut, but uh, it's something helpful. I injured my shoulder. So the, there's power in uh, what is called human growth hormone, but I don't want to take needles or injections. So this is all about a topical low dosage that you can rub on your wrists and it gives you um, some human growth hormone. And it was the only way that my shoulder improved and my injury went away. And this was after months of trying different stuff, going to doctors saying, no, you're not torn, uh, a torn area in your labral you know, uh, muscle, but you just need to heal, but it wasn't healing. And so that, that, that transformed my life. And then I do take a memory supplement, uh, memory stuff by Gary Noll, and it has ground up flax seeds and all these supplements in there, ginkgo biloba, all this other stuff, because I was struggling when I was managing different people, people would tell me stuff and they said, Tim, I already told you that. And, and I'm like, you forgot. And it was in negatively impacting my ability to perform my work. So I discovered that there were supplements you could take. And then suddenly, boom, I was remembering characters and movies. Somebody could ask me a question and I could retain it. So again, uh, very, very powerful stuff. And then the last thing is enzymes. Uh, I do that because your body needs all these different enzymes. I go to a chiropractor, and she gives me, touches different points in my body. And she's like, you know, your kidneys are inflamed or your pancreas. Why don't you take this enzyme supplement to help break down your foods, uh, to help uh, ease the, you know, support of your pancreas, whatever it may be. And I've noticed that it helps. So again, I'm just sharing with you what I'm doing. And I know I'm throwing a lot out of you and I'm going really fast. It's because I want to make sure that I don't go over time and give time to Felicia, but I hope it shows you what I'm really doing for optimal health. So let me tell you now how uh, I met Felicia. So Felicia and I met, we were part of this networking group and she shared with that she was a certified functional nutrition counselor. And I'm like, okay, that's nice. I, that's pretty cool. You're teaching people to eat healthy. I'm like, you know what? I'm good. I eat healthy. By the way, I'm vegetarian, you know, uh, you know, wear it proud on my shoulder. I don't eat any meat. I eat a lot of salads, vegetables. Fine, fine, fine. So I was doing my regular health maintenance. And I went to the doctor for my annual checkup and they do blood work. 
And then they give you a, a whole blood panel saying, okay, well, how are you doing your vitamins, your thyroid and all this other stuff. And they would give you a score and it would say whether it was extreme or normal. And guess what? The results came back. And my doctor said, hey, guess what? You're healthy. Hey, you know what? Your vitamin Ds are a little level, a little low. So why don't you go outside a little bit more? But other than that, you're good. Great job. Thank you. So I left feeling very happy. And then my uh, one of my family members was having some health problems. And they went to this naturalist, this Colombian man named Manuel Pin Pinzon. Uh, he doesn't even speak English. And I went with her to help support her because guess what? I'm fascinated by health and alternative treatments, anything that you can do. And uh, he basically put her on the table, did acupuncture, Te, you know, checked her 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 blood pressure by touching her hand to seeing what wh how how hard the blood was pumping into her veins. I'm like, whoa, is he that sensitive that he can feel the difference? Um, he would look into your eyes with his phone and camera to see what kind of health ailments are visible in your eyes, and then he would talk with you and would say and talk about your emotions and what's going on in your life, and he would tap in. He's like, what's going on with this person? And then I would have my family members started crying and I'm like, oh my goodness, this guy's very spiritual, like very deep connected, intuitive. And I'm like, I'm next. I want to check this out. So he, uh, I book a session with him. I lie on the table. You know, we talk again. I've done so much emotional work that I don't think that there's any deep emotional issues that I have to resolve, which was fine. But he touched my different my parts of my body and he says, hmm, your intestines are inflamed. Are you eating a lot of dairy? And I'm like, why, yes, I am. I'm having pizzas all the time and they're delicious, And but I need that for fuel. And he's like, you got to cut it out. Like it's too much. And he started teaching me about eating more nuts. And he's like, how much nuts should I eat? you put it in the palm of your hand. That's how much you should eat. He taught me how to sprout lentils and mix it with garlic and onion and olive oil and, and lemon. And it was like delicious with apples and it's like a lentil salad. So he transformed my life. And so I go to uh, Felicia and I'm like, I'm ready for a different you know, opinion health. And so she's like, send me your blood work. And I send her my blood work. And guess what she says? She says, Tim, you have inflammation in your body, in your intestines. Uh, are you eating a lot of dairy? And I'm like, oh, she said exactly what this naturalist said. And I said, yes. She's like, you got to cut it out. And so that's how I knew that my own doctor was telling me that I was perfectly healthy. And then I had Felicia saying, backing up what this other person said. So I'm like, I got to check it out. So I booked a session with her. Uh, she, we did a, um, a, a cooking class with my wife. And so we started eating more vegetables incorporating that was very tasty. So I'm so glad that Felicia's here and we'll have more time for Q and a, but, uh, uh you know, uh, uh, it's all you, Felicia, um, hand it over. Okay. Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute, by the way. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. I also found your asthma. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> anyway, um, I I love when you speak about this, Tim. I, I really, really do because it, it, it lends so much to what I do for a living, you know, um, that, that it's great to see and hear somebody actually living it, you know, um, so kudos to you for sure. Um, Anyway, so yes, I am a functional nutritionist, um, a certified functional nutrition counselor. I have uh, training in anatomy, physiology, and analyzing blood work. Um, and I take a holistic approach um, with lifestyle nutrition to treat the individual as a whole person rather than um, a cookie cutter plan that a diet could be for anybody. Um, it doesn't manage root causes. It doesn't find root causes, which is what I do. I find root causes of dis-ease um, and try and help that. Um, if you come to me with symptoms, we try to find out why you're having these symptoms. And if you come to me with a diagnosis, I'm gonna try and find out why you have this diagnosis. Um, and I have since become as well an integrative health practitioner. So. So not only do I treat you holistically, 
um, but I also incorporate physical, mental, emotional, social, and environmental modalities. Um, I utilize Ayurvedic, Chinese, naturopathic um, modalities to, to help with detox, nutritional therapy, um, and again, to create um, one whole body in optimal health um, and you specifically. So it's not, again, it's not, you know, a broad range. I can talk broadly, um, but I get to know you personally and we come up with a lifestyle plan for you. And um, and I'm, I'm very proud of that. So with that being said, um, I utilize the de-stress protocol. So if you see on your screens, diet, exercise, stress, toxin removal, rest, environment, and it should, I should have said slash emotions, and then success mindset and supplements when necessary. Please keep in mind that supplements are just that. They're not meant to replace um, a meal or, um, or anything of that nature. So if you're eating very healthy to begin with, um, and depending, of course, on, on what I see, you may not need supplements. You know, supplements are, they can be expensive depending on the brand and things like that. They can be um, very misleading. They can be mixed with things that you don't even know what you're getting. Um, so I do a lot of research. If I do recommend a supplement, I, I, I research things like crazy before I, before I do that. Um, so again, supplements are only when necessary, especially if you're eating a whole food plant-based diet. Um, so when it comes to your diet, okay, um, I use the 80-20 rule with everybody and with everything. 80% um, of your plate should be whole food, plant-based. Um, I recommend, I, I recommend vegan um, and, and I was vegan. I actually just started incorporating fish into my diet, um, but um, as close to earth as a food is, the better it is for you, okay? Um, so the less processed. So 80% of your plate should be whole grains, fruits, vegetables, and 20% is a protein of your choice. Um, keeping in mind that it, it is, you know, fresh, wild caught, if you, if you do eat meat, um, fresh, wild caught, organic, um, hopefully, you know, has the Humane Society stamp on there. And it's just, it's, it's a better, more, um, it's better than having to take medicine all the time. Yeah, 80, again, the 80, 20 rule um, for anybody, it, it works. Uh, also too, um, again, you know, still, I don't like the word diet. I hate the word diet, um, but it is what it is right now. So it's very easy to eat well on a regular basis. Um, it's more affordable than you think it is. And if you take a couple of hours on a Sunday morning, you can actually prep for four to five days worth of meals um, to get you out the door in a hurry. If you're rushing in the morning, um, it helps you to not eat the foods that can lead to brain fog, lethargy, and poor performance in the middle of the day. And it can keep you feeling energized for the rest of the day, less stress, which in turn leads to optimal performance and a general feeling of actual accomplishment. You know, um, it just takes a couple of hours. Um, it's more affordable than you think it is. Um, and, you know, you pull from some of your favorite, your favorite foods, you know, and then you break it down. And I can show you how to do that. That is something that, that I do help you with. Um, when it comes to eating out when or actually even eating home or anything else uh, it's all about portion control um i'm not even going to sit here and tell you you can't have the foods that you love um, but if you take a look at the serving size on a bag a box or anything like that if that's what you're supposed to be having so when you see a quarter cup of dry rice you know and that amounts to a half a cup when it's fully cooked that's actually the proper portion that you should be having. Um, 
I don't have a half a cup. I'm, I'm going to admit it. I probably eat a full cup at least, but you're supposed to stay within, you know, your portion. Um, and that helps with weight management and helps with, with not overeating. And again, again, the 80, 20 rule, eat till you feel about 80% full and then wait, wait, see how you feel. If you're out to dinner, ask for a to-go box right after you place your order so that you can take, you know, because the portions they give you generally are gigantic. Um, you can take half of that, put it in a box and take it home, you know, and and you don't feel so bad spending the money eating out because now you've got another meal for later, you know? So that's, that's another way to look at it as well. Um, choices, okay? Um, choices for eating and, and I, I can't stress enough how much I hate, and I, I know it's a terrible word, but um, the word diet, okay? It's it's such a bad word. It's almost like a curse word. I'm on a diet. I, I follow a diet. I, um, it's, it's about nutrition. That's what it's about. It's about how a food serves your body, how a food nourishes your body. Um, I don't want people to think of food as... as um, I can't have this, I can't have that, or this piece of cake is, is, is a treat, or because you're already making yourself feel bad for having it, you know, um, or maybe giving yourself a reward, but then later saying, I shouldn't have had that, you know what I mean? Have it. If you really want it, have it. And don't think of it as something that's so bad for you. Um, there are choices that you can make, um, whether you're home or out or anything else that will um make your life so much easier is it baked is it broiled is it lightly grilled um sauteed um not in a cream sauce um dressing on the side if you're having a nice big salad um you know it's it's about being mindful of what you're eating taking a minute to think about what you're reading if it's on a menu or what you're shopping for in the store saying, is this gonna be good for me? Is this going to be good for my family? Is this going to um, help with my everyday um, comings and goings and stresses of life and things like that? Is this gonna help me or is this gonna hurt me? Um, that's what you're looking at. You're not looking at calories. You're not looking at macros and micros and, and things that set you up for failure or make you feel bad about um, putting the weight back on that you went on the keto or, or, you know, some kind of specialized diet or things like that, that, um, that you couldn't withstand. This is, again, it's nutrition and lifestyle. It's just coming up with something that works for you and then surrounding yourself by people who respect you, who don't make you feel bad for your choices. Um, who may even join you, you know, you wind up being, being a poster child for perfect health or for really good health. And they'll be like, you know what, I'm going to do what you're doing. Show me how, you know, um, these are, these are benefits, you know, but you know, you can be, be around people who are positive and supportive of you. You know, if you're going out, um, again, it's about choices. It's about asking yourself, Hey, can I get a salad? You know, any, any, uh, I love ethnic food. So, any restaurant that I go to, you know, I'm getting a salad first. Um, you know, I, I, I look for the vegetables. Um, I, I'm allergic actually to gluten, dairy, and eggs, um, which actually happen to be the top three allergens out there. So gluten-free pastas and, and um, um, brown rice, white rice, um, things like that are things that I can have. I am a potato freak. My favorite food is French fries. And while I don't have them often, um, you know, if I can find somebody with a dedicated fryer, I have them, you know, but it's, it's, it's a question of balance, the 80, 20 rule, um, you know, eating healthy 80% of the time serves your body, serves your mind, serves your, your, your inner emotional self as well. Um, so again, Italian, Mexican, Asian, Greek, you can find many different forms of healthy food to eat um, and still fit in with your, if you're at a work meeting or if you're at, out with friends socializing or you're with your family, 
um, there are a lot of different choices out there um, that can that can help you make things easier, especially nowadays. It wasn't as easy going back, but now it's so much easier to make healthier choices. Felicia, uh, so, sorry for interrupting. We had two comments in the chat. One was from Elizabeth. Uh, mm -hmm. She had a question regarding eczema. Is, are there eczema triggering, triggering foods? And then Kieran had a question about she's also allergic to gluten. So I don't know if there's other recommendations of what you can do. Um, believe it or not, eczema, eczema um, can have its root in egg white allergies. Oh, interesting. Yes. Yes, more people are allergic to egg whites than egg yolks, believe it or not. Um, and that, um, it's a his, and when I say allergic or maybe sensitive is, is, the, is the right word, but that's a histamine, eczema is a histamine based um, reaction. So um, I would say it's an allergic, but it's, it's, not a, it's not a food sensitivity as much as it's metabolic sensitivity. Um, so I would, I would see how you, how you do taking out eggs out of your diet, just yeah. right from the get go. Yeah. And Elizabeth has nickel and cobalt allergy. I would actually recommend that she book a, a 15 minute uh, schedule call with you, Felicia. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So we're going to provide uh, Elizabeth great questions and, and I want to be able to support everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, at, we're going to give her contact information at the end so that you can set that up. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm just gonna go real quickly through the de-stress protocol. Um, so we just, I just covered the diet um, and exercise. Now I'm going through this protocol just to, to show people how easy it is to take care of yourself without feeling like, um, like it's a job or like it's a chore. Okay, so you know we covered the diet part, the D for de-stress, the diet part as just making healthier choices and spreading your food out. That's a huge thing that I didn't mention. Spread your food out a good three hours in between your meals. Doing that allows your body to actually thoroughly digest your food before giving it some more, okay? Um, and, and that way you're just not adding food on top of food because um, being full, being that full um, doesn't allow your body to detox. It actually, it actually hinders detox. Um, so you want to spread your food out about three hours between meals um, and drink a lot of water and, and things like that. So now we're on E for exercise. Um, and exercise is a series of push and pull, back and forth, side to side, and up and down. I call the functional exercises exercises that you actually do every day without you without actually realizing it you know um do you squat down to take the laundry out of the dryer and then stand up and then put it you know, fold it or you know or squat down to take it out of the washing machine and and squat down to put it in the dryer you know they're they're if functional exercises that mimic your everyday activities um, to keep your joints and muscles supple, can raise your heart rate in a healthy in a healthy way, and not tax the body. Um, not time consuming, depending on if you're just starting out or you don't have. Uh, I don't have an hour to spend at the gym. I don't go to the gym. Um, I don't. I work out at home 20 minutes every morning. I'm done. Um, and um, it's a squat, lunge back and forth lunge side to side, push-ups, and um, crunches, you know, in and out, ab and legs, crunches. Um, and it covers push and pull, back and forth, side to side, up and down. And those five, five moves um, can become as challenging as you want them to be, or as easy as you want them to be, depending on how you feel that day. If you wanna add weights, that's good. Weights are the best for getting your metabolism up. Um, you can incorporate um, some high intensity interval training. Um, if you want to break up your set, if you only want to do one set and you're done, that's fine. That's if that's all you have time for and you want to do each set, exercise for a minute, that's a start. And that's more than some people have done. And five minutes, five minutes more that you put into yourself. You as a person 
as an individual are worth 20 minutes. Okay, you guys are worth 20 minutes to take that time for yourself. So you wanna do a set of five exercises, throw some jumping jacks in there, do another set of the same five exercises if you want, jog in place, you know, and get your heart rate up. You'll be surprised what that will do if you do it for a month, every day, every day. Um, it's fantastic. Get your 10,000 steps, huge. We are so sedentary that most of us get about 3,500 steps, if that, a day. Your phone, everybody carries their phone with them. Um, I have the little heart app on my phone that I didn't put there, it just came with the phone and it tracks my steps. So I didn't have to pay for it, it's there. And I see, I'm, I, I don't even know where I'm at right now. Um, but you, you can trace how many steps you do. So I make it fun, I make it a challenge. Um, I park all the way down at the end of the parking lot, you know, and I walk all the way to the store, um, grab my cart, go back to my car, put the cart all the way away, all the way back and I walk back. And I, I actually, I, every night I sit there and I go, okay, how many steps do I have? Um, I'm lucky enough to live, um, uh, I'm at 7,500 steps right now. I'm lucky enough to, <laughs> to live um, right by the water. So you know, I'll take a walk to the water tonight, which is what I do most nights, um, and take a walk around my neighborhood. And that'll bring me to my 10,000 steps. But 10,000 steps and take a walk after lunch, take a 20 minute take a 20 minute walk after lunch, 10 minute walk after dinner, you know, walk your dog, you know, things like that. Those things all add up. It calms your sympathetic nervous system allows you to breathe a little better, allows you to maybe gather your thoughts if you've had a particularly stressful day um, and just get you in tune with nature, get outside. Um, all very, very healthy. And, and again, it's lifestyle. It's not about doing anything particular. It's just investing in yourself, you know? And when I say investing, it's just investing time. It's not money. It's not anything else other than taking a walk and exercising, uh, five exercises. That's it. A minute each, five minutes, you know? Um, and then the S in distress is for stress. Um, and stress, and I'm going to read this because I, I want to cover everything here. So stress may be my biggest reason for wanting to help everyone do this program. It is the leading, leading cause of heart disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, triglycerides, autoimmune disease, chronic inflammation, and neurological diseases, okay? Um, the only way to fix stress is to be aware of it. What gets you fired up? What gets you angry, upset, worried, anxious, or depressed? That is also stress, okay? Again, you're talking about the sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving and you wanna calm that down, the rest and digest, the rest and relax. That's where you wanna to get to. And you wanna to get to that, not at the end of the day, although that's what you want as well, but in the middle of the day, you, you want to, there's this gut brain, which many of you may know, gut brain access, um, that is connected by, um, the vagus nerve. Are we familiar with the vagus nerve? Okay. Um, this is a pathway. It stems from the brain to the lower back and groin. Um, and it sends signals. You get signals up and down, back and forth. And when you are stressed, that nerve is altered. And what you think what you feel and what you experience travel through this nerve. And this is the beginning of chronic inflammation. So I can show you how to calm your parasymp parasympathetic nervous system um, and stimulate the vagus nerve to, to, um, to create a more better feeling of well being. Um, this will affect your organs, your brain function. Um, and your gut, okay? And three simple things right off the bat, breathe really deep, fill up your chest, fill up your belly, hold it, 
and then let it out like an arm, like you were doing yoga. So you're like, oh, from the back of your throat. That stimulates the nerve back here. That om, that letting that out stimulates that nerve. Sleep is huge. Seven to nine hours every night. Turn off your, your social media. Turn off your blue screens. Um, take a warm shower. Meditate. Um, dark room. Cool room. Um, and don't eat about two to three hours before bed. Try to wake up the same time every day. Even if you, you know, start out setting your alarm um, and give yourself a reminder at night of wind down. My, I have to be, in, I'm in my, in my world, I'm in bed at 10 o'clock. So my wind down, I get in, my alarm goes off at 940 where I'm already relaxed. My kitchen is clean. Everything is done, whatever. And, um, and it's like, okay, time for that wind down. So I hop in the shower and I just relax. I get into bed and sometimes I'll read, sometimes I'll journal, but make a plan, make a plan for, um, for the next day. Okay. So that way you can get to sleep without your mind racing. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. Make a plan, you know, so that you know what you, what you need to set out to do the next day. And that way you can get a nice restful sleep. Um, and things to do to eat for stress, energy, stamina, and a general feeling of well-being that calm your central, your sympathetic nervous system. Sweet potatoes, grass-fed dairy or whey, bananas, green or herbal teas, dark chocolate, um, Brazil nuts, spinach, leafy greens, which I would recommend sauteed, mushrooms, flax seeds, avocado, and citrus fruit are all excellent um, choices um, for calming your sympathetic nervous system. And then we get to toxins. Okay, so toxin removal is uh, insanely important from everyday products we use in our homes, on our bodies and are exposed to. It's no wonder allergies and asthma are on the rise. If you're dealing with body aches, coughing, phlegm, migraines, mood swings, fatigue and sinus conditions, all the time this could be why? Mold, pollution, and chemicals. Okay, drink half your body, half your body weight in ounces of water each day. Eat your leafy greens, seven to nine cups of fruits and vegetables. Fasting is an excellent way to detox your body. Um, fresh herbs, spices, ginger, turmeric, garlic, cilantro. Eliminate air fresheners, bleach, drain cleaners, perfume, and dyes in your laundry detergent boric acid, chlorine, formaldehyde, fragrance, phthalates, sodium, lauryl sulfate, and triclosan are some of the chemicals that are in our homes already um, that we can be more, more aware of in just reading a label. Rest in the de-stress protocol. Rest is crucial and goes back to removing stress, resetting your diurnal pattern, getting your sleep seven to nine hours, aids the body in digesting food, detoxing from environmental exposure, and sets a general pattern for well-being. Environment. Okay, this, this is a tender spot for me as well. So some of you may say to me, or a medical doctor will say to me, you're misguided, you're misinformed. My grandparents have been eating this, you know, this way, and they're in their 80s, and they're, they're fine. Or a doctor will say, there's no such thing as leaky gut, but they'll treat SIBO, which is exact, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, which is the exact same thing as leaky gut. But because functional medicine or integrative medicine will call it leaky gut, I cannot diagnose. I am not a medical doctor. Um, so we'll say you have leaky gut, or it appears that you have leaky gut, um, but a doctor will say SIBO and treat you with a drug I will treat you holistically. But I would say to you, okay, have you seen the state of our agriculture and farming? Um, the living conditions, the pesticides and the antibiotics that we give the animals that we in turn then do eat. Um, according to Science Direct and a recent report from United Nations, almost one third of the world's farmable land has disappeared in the last four decades. So if your grandparents were fine back then, 
if they're fine now and they're not taking any medication and and they're going to live another 20 plus years and and they're going to be you know a centurion god bless i i think that's phenomenal um but if they're on medication if they're on any kind of drugs and things like that it's because the systems are breaking down we don't have that kind of soil we don't have the kind of produce and and um, pasture raised products and things like that, that we had 40 years ago. Um, 40 years of loss of physical, chemical, chemical, biological and natural makeup of our soil. So again, a, a doctor will give you a pill after you're already sick um, and I will treat you before you get sick. Um, so with all of that being said, I feel like I've been talking forever. Um, so with all that, I'm going to tell you why I'm so passionate. Um, so as you can see from your screen, that was my diet from the time I was a child, white, everything white, uh, white toast, white bread, macaroni, um, processed mac and cheese, um, hamburgers, hot dogs. Um, I was the oldest of four kids. You know, my parents did the best they could with us, fed us what was affordable, um, and things like that. Um, I was heavy, not super heavy, but I was heavy um, for my age. Um, my sister uh, was put on the Atkins diet actually by the time she was eight years old. And the Atkins diet then is what keto is now. Um, so I'll tell you about that in a second. Um, so I became very... Um, body aware at a young age, because in my family, appearance was everything, you know, and, and, and so um, with my sister being put on a diet, and then it was like, well, you know, what's wrong with me? And, and how do I, how do I compare? And then I, you know, you're in school, and you're looking at all the skinny popular girls, and I'm not one of them. And, um, you know, I want to be so fad diets, you know, were big, I did the slim fast, I did well, my sister did the Atkins diet, you know, um, but I would look in the mirror and I would just be like, I still have so much weight to lose. Like, everything was all about losing weight and how I looked. Um, it had nothing to do with how I felt. By the time I moved out of my house, I was a cardio junkie. Um, running, I'm um, doing aerobics, um, um, no weights, no weights, because that wasn't popular in the 80s. I'm 54, by the way. So um, so I've had a, a lifespan of of ups and downs. Um, so, you know, I, it was all about weights and, and physical fitness and cardio and, you know, Zumba um, back then was just, you know, um, uh, high intensity exercise, you know, um, no weights again or anything like that. Um, and then um, at 44, um, I went for, I actually Sorry to any of the guys there. Um, I actually was having really horrific periods. Um, so I went for a checkup, which turned into another checkup, which turned into um, stage three colon, colon cancer. Um, don't know where that came from. Um, that was um, a huge, huge surprise. So I had about a year and a half of um, chemotherapy, radiation, multiple surgeries, um, and I felt like crap. You know, I mean, I tried, I tried really hard. Um, and this is when I started looking at my diet, um, even what I was feeding my family and things like that. But um, I would say to my doctor, um, my friend told me to stay away from sugar. You know, sugar is not good for you. You know, you, you need to you need to stay away from that. And he would go, whatever you do, please eat whatever you want. We can't have you losing any more weight. We can't have you, you know. Um, and I'm like, but doesn't sugar attract cancer? And the fact of the matter is, is that when you get a PET scan, that's what they inject you with because the cancer runs right to it. It runs right to the sugar. Um, and then I would say, I incorporated a lot more leafy greens into my into my diet now, um, so I'm strong to handle the chemo, you know. Um, and they would go, "Don't do that. Whatever you do, don't do that. That's antioxidants. That's going to fight the chemo." And I would say, "Yeah, but 
Um, don't I want to preserve my good cells? We want to can kill the cancer cells, but don't I want to preserve my good cells? And they would go, Felicia, please just do whatever, just eat whatever you want, please. Don't, don't do anything out of the ordinary right now. I didn't listen. And I don't know if that's why I'm here, honestly. I, I really and truly don't. Um, it's 10 plus years now. Um, so knock on something um, that I am, I am free and clear. Um, however, fast forward a few years later, um, my husband dropped out of a massive heart attack. Um, he was 52. Um, he had high, high cholesterol and high triglycerides and he was warned repeatedly. And so he would eliminate the junk food during the week and just eat the junk food on the weekend. And he would run for a half hour on the treadmill um, every day um, and he would lose 30 pounds like that. Yeah, yeah. Guys are, have it lucky when it comes to stuff like that. But he would do that and he would yo-yo and he would yo-yo and he would yo-yo. Um, and um, um, he was a big, huge meat eater um, and heavy carb. And, um, and so that got the best of him. Um, and I don't know what else to say about that. So, you know, um, just as a side note, my father just had open heart surgery. Um, he had a heart attack two years ago. My sister, um, who I told mentioned earlier being on the Atkins diet from the time she was eight years old. Um, she had her first heart attack three years ago at uh, 42. Okay, she's alive. Um, and um, this is what this is what hurts. My brother, I also had a brother that died from a heart attack. He actually, they found him sleeping. He, they thought he was sleeping in his car. Um, he had what was called the widow maker, which is what my husband had. Um, so heart disease runs in my family, um, apparently, and colon cancer does not. Um, so that was, I had, I was genetically tested. I had, you know, all the tests that you can imagine. So I don't know where that came from, but this is, this is why I appeal to you guys. Um, genetics is only a bullet. Your lifestyle pulls the trigger. Um, the National Institute of Health estimates that up to 23.5 million Americans suffer from autoimmune disease and that number is climbing. Today, one in three people are diagnosed with cancer. Scientists predicting that percentage to go higher. And the American Cancer Society states that five to 10% of cancers are, are only, are, I'm sorry, only five to 10% of cancers are caused by genetics. 90% are linked to diet, lifestyle, and environment. All the things that are under your control. And this is why I am so passionate about what I do. Um, it's very in depth. Uh, it's very heartfelt. I speak from experience. Um, and I'm not a good salesperson, as you can tell, my, my stuttering and, and everything else. But I'm just trying to get my, my point across that no matter how young you are, no matter how old you are, you're not immune. You're not immune to getting sick. And I, I want you to be as healthy as you possibly can, not wind up where I was, not have happened to a family member or to yourself, something like what happened to my husband. Um, so I, I thank you for having me, Tim. And, um, my, my number is up on the screen. My website is down right now. So I'm really sorry about that. It's a, it's, it, I am not, um, technology savvy, so I'm working on it. Um, but my email is there. Don't hesitate to call, um, send me an email with questions. I, I will be happy, happy to answer whatever I possibly can or look into it if I don't know. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Felicia. I really appreciate it. So at this point, let me stop sharing my screen and we can do a Q&A at this moment. So does anybody have any questions that they would like to- I didn't uh, even look in the chat yet. Sorry, Tim, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, go ahead. I just stopped the chat and then I'm going to post the post assessment. But does anybody have any questions that we could answer? Now's a good time. Just feel free to unmute yourself.
while you're doing that and ask away. I'm posting the a post assessment survey. Anybody have any questions? And if you have any, don't have any questions and you want to share your thoughts, you know, what was the biggest insight that you got? I know that we packed it full of information. <laughs> uh, then I do have a question. Go ahead, Susan. Um, my family is very, um, I had heart, heart conditions in the family. Um, my mother's two sisters and brothers died from heart failure. My cousin died from heart failure. Um, hang on, I'm putting meat away. <laughs> um, and my mother and I do not take do have not had any issues. My mother is 75 out and I, I turned 50 this year. So <laughs> I know I know that um I know that um being prevalent and with your diet helps but what can I do about my stress level hmm. is my question. My stress level is through the roof because of life situations. And my, I put it in the chat what's been going on. So what can I do for to help reduce my stress that I'm not already doing? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of active in the church um and i do uh the time that kind of thing but i don't know what what else i can do to offset my stress do you know what triggers your stress susan i have i have anxiety and depression issues um I'm diagnosed with uh, GAD and MMD. GAD? MDD. GAD, generalized anxiety. Okay. MDD is uh, mm -hmm. uh, major depressive disorder. Mm -hmm. Do you take medication for that? Yes, I do. Does it help? Yeah. For the most part, okay. It, but um, last April, my boyfriend had a stroke, and right now he's having an issue with me having his car, and he's not understanding that he can't drive right now. So I needed the car, and right. So it's it's life stress. Yeah. 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 So, um, well, it's important to be surrounded by people who support you. Okay. Um, I, I'm staying with my mother right now because of the okay. All right. situation. Is it sometimes, uh, and I, and I, I mean, I don't know, I don't know you and I don't know, you know, um, your, your boyfriend or, or anything like that, Right. but sometimes you have to take a step back. I'm not saying you don't talk to somebody, you don't have a relationship with somebody, but sometimes you have to take a step back just so that you can breathe and make sense of whatever the situation is that you're feeling anxious about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, breathe, you know, um, um, your diet, you're, you're eating, you're eating well, you eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and things like that. That, that I try, um, <laughs> like I put in the thing, I, I, I get food stamps, so it's hard to get fresh fruit and vegetables. Okay. Um, I do. I do eat uh, pre-made salad from okay. the store. How about? Um, do you pay attention to your sodium levels by any chance? Me no. Pay attention to your sodium levels. Um, I like that. And I'll and I'll tell you why. Um, my my 
my husband who passed away, his mother was bipolar. Um, and a lot of, as a matter of fact, and um, I have been diagnosed with severe IBS since my, since my surgeries and things like that. And my mother-in-law was on um, lithium, um, which is salt-based. Yeah. Uh, so it, help, it makes you retain a lot of water. Um, and it, it sets your body chemistry off. Okay. So, um, if you can watch your sodium intake so that your own body chemistry levels out a little bit while on your medication, um, I think that you'll, you'll actually start to feel better. You won't get um, anxious in your chest, you know, racing heart, things like that. Um, start to start to watch your sodium levels a little bit. Um, cook your foods, whatever foods it is that you're eating, whether you know your fruits and vegetables, uh, your vegetables in particular. Um, try and saute them as opposed to eating them raw. Digestion um, actually takes up about thirty percent of our energy um, to digest our food. So um, if you can ease your digestion and save your energy for what it is that you actually need the energy for, you'll be more productive. So even if it's energy in, in dealing with a particular situation, you'll be able to breathe a little bit better. You'll be able to handle it a little bit more. Okay. Um, and, and step back when you have to. Definitely step back when you have to. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that would be like initially without seeing you know, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, Susan, I'm going to chime in here. I have a quick question, and, and I'm glad you asked that because I know that other people may be experiencing the same thing. Do you drink a lot of stimulants with a lot of caffeine? No, oh, you don't? Okay, good, good. I, no. I, I, I was just wondering about that. Um, oftentimes, you know, there could be a whole series of recommendations that that you could do to help de-stress, right? Beyond the things that you're doing, stuff that we've already talked about. And, and maybe, uh, and remember how, like, I'll just bring it back to the whole nutrition. It's like, I read in the books that in order to help the acne, I needed fiber, but it wasn't, it was not just that. It was something else in addition to that. You know, it was the water plus the fiber. It wasn't just water itself. So it's like, you know what, you know that you may, things to de-stress might be meditation, right? You know, a gratitude journaling, right? But like the thing is about it is, okay, well, how much meditation are you doing? You know, when are you incorporating it? Um, you know, what, when are you doing your breathing exercise? You may say, well, I meditate. Well, how long are you meditating? So many times I, I'm a big believer that you deep down inside know what you need to do, right? You know, like, I feel like you have the answers. So you don't really need us. But as long as you are committed to finding other solutions, you'll keep, you, you keep going on your path, right? You're listening to this. You're, you're going to learn something new. I was doing a life coaching with, um, you know, a, a, a professional life coach, had a master's degree in positive psychology and, you know, set goals, did all my kind of stuff. Yet I was depressed and I was feeling depressed. And she said, do this test and uh, and you'll determine whether you're depressed or not. And I took the test and it says, yes, you are depressed. Please go to see professional counseling. And so it was only because like I went to go see my chiropractor and I said, I'm depressed. I did this thing. And I was searching for answers that I sought out something else that I sought out a spiritual teacher, a shamanic empathic healer by the name of Gary Spolansky. And he did a different therapy that wasn't traditional counseling. So be open to new different types of healing modalities. As long as you're on your path and your journey, you know, keep trying new things trying them differently. And I think that you'll find yourself, uh, you know, hopefully finding some solutions that will help you. And if you're interested in that guy's contact information, just text me and I'm happy to send it to you, Susan. But uh, that's my two cents. Go ahead, Felicia, you were going to say more, um, one more thing. Susan, I, I just did, just peeked in the chat a little bit and I saw that you're doing the intermittent fasting. Where'd you go? Yes, I am. Stop it. <laughs> um i i, I don't I, eat breakfast I, anyway so it was 
Okay. But, um, but if you don't eat breakfast, which is, I, I, I get that, then have a smoothie. You know what I mean? Don't, don't do the intermittent fasting. You shouldn't go, especially with medication and things like that. You shouldn't be going more than 12, 13 hours the most without food. Okay. Um, that 12 hours right. from the time you finish eating your evening meal to the time you have your first meal of the day is sufficient enough for your body to detox. Okay. You are spiking your cortisol level. Okay. And by spiking your cortisol level by not eating creates more anxiety because you're go you're like this, you're like this, you're like, you know what I mean? Um, so eat in the morning, even if it's just a smoothie, throw some vegetables in there, throw some cucumbers in there, throw some fruit in there, throw whatever, have breakfast, please have breakfast. That Test it out, right? See how it works. How long should, would you recommend, Felicia, that she try that for? Ever. You know? <laughs> Forever? <laughs> no, I don't believe in the intermittent fasting. Um, unless you have a lot of weight to lose and you are looking to do something quickly um, or to get results quickly, but you have to have a maintenance plan with the, with the intermittent fasting. Otherwise, you're actually going to mess up your thyroid, um, your kidneys. Um, um, In a meeting. What's that? <laughs> oh, um, my boyfriend's calling me. I'm telling him I'm in a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you actually, long-term intermittent fasting is not good. It's actually not. Um, so I, if, you're, if, if you're doing it just because you think it's the thing to do, it's actually not. And when you're um, when you're on medication that slows your metabolism to begin with, um, but it's an anxiety disorder to begin with, you're also, you're talking about your adrenals, you're talking about your kidneys, okay? And if you're not eating, that actually increases, it probably makes it harder for you to fall asleep, I would imagine, too. Mm. Yeah. Wow. All right. Great question, Susan. Thanks so much for- It for usually takes me about an hour, hour and a half to fall asleep. Yeah. 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 So, well, well, uh, this has been great. Thank you, everybody, for your questions, for the chat. Uh, I loved uh, people contributing. Felicia, thank to you, thank you. Uh, for being here, for offering such good advice. Um, I'm going to send out the recording along with some additional resources. There's a, a very popular YouTube channel that I love, which is called Plant Chompers. And uh, it does a lot of different science and goes into different diets and things like that. But again, it, it's about nourishing your body and figuring out what works right for you because again these are this is what we need you know only you and your body knows what you need and you can keep trying until what works for you so again if if eating only meat works for your diet then good for you i'm not going to i'm not going to judge you and say that that's wrong right because the body is a very complex organism but i really appreciate all of you being here and uh and uh, look forward to seeing you guys next week uh, when we're going to be doing a whole training uh, on mindfulness. And so uh, we're going to be starting off with a big meditation and, and learning how we can actually reduce stress, you know, uh, be present more, be more aware. So I look forward to seeing you all there. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs>